Welcome to this session. Um, it's fantastic to see so many people here and I think the opportunity to talk about some of the, the big scale projects that can happen with Wiki, Wiki projects is really quite exciting. So we're going to be looking at the Wiki future of Europeana in this session. Europeana has recently published its vision for 2020, aiming to have an impact on society, economy and the innovation of the cultural heritage sector. That's a pretty old, big statement and um, really looking forward to hear what um, our presenters have got to say. I'd just like to introduce them to you. Harry, I'm sorry, I might be able to say your surname properly. Ah, uh, uh, well, not bad at all. <laughs> He's the Deputy Director at Europeana, responsible for making sure that they meet their objectives as an organisation and do that well. What he likes to do more than anything else, though, is to design and implement new business models to change the ways of thinking about heritage as an enabler of societal and economic growth. And our other presenter, Liam Wyatt, is actually from back home, but he's come to work in Europeana. So um, he's facilitating Europeana's relationship with the Wikimedia community and co-chairs the Europeana Wikimedia Task Force, helps the fans upload the material to the community comments with the fans who talk it and he's no stranger to many of you. So I'll hand over to our presenters. Right, thank you. Um, Okay, so uh, thank you all for being here. It's really great. I recognize some of you, some of you I've never seen before. Uh, so what Liam and I uh, were proposing to do is to give you uh, a quick introduction to what Europeana... Oh, sorry about that. No problem. Uh, now it's for the camera. Yeah. I'll give you a quick introduction to Europeana's aims, and I'll try to uh, prove to you how closely we are related, we think, to uh, the aims of the Wikipedia community. Uh, but there are also some slight differences, and I think those are the interesting things to, to flush out. And then Liam will take you through uh, the task force recommendations, um, which are much, much more specific about what kind of things can we do together. And if it's all right with you, we'll pick your brains to see how we can improve them. Yep. Um, let's see. Right. Yeah. So we've published this uh, nicely looking uh, document there for you, a strategy. Uh, you're welcome to, uh, to get one. It's a quite ambitious uh, plan to work with the, uh, <coughs> the, all the institutions that Europeana works with. To give you an idea, we have currently three and a half thousand contributing institutions, varying from libraries, museums, archives, across all of Europe. So I think that's, that's probably the most important and interesting thing about Europeana is that we're connected to so many different uh, institutions, eh? ranging from big ones like the Louvre, but also smaller institutions like the, I was mentioned, the Drents Archief. That's difficult to pronounce as well. Uh, but smaller archives, and they are just as valuable. And I think we provide something that no one else does. Uh, the Louvre will find its own way into the digital world, but the Drents Archief uh, can use a bit of uh, networked um, support in that. So like I said, we, we try to position Europeana as a movement, a networked movement that aims to really accomplish uh, an impact, uh, a European impact primarily, but a perhaps even spreading out more widely uh, on several areas. And we try to be a bit more organized about it. So we really want to contribute to what we call social and cultural innovation. Do we understand each other a bit better if we make culture available? We also have an economic aim. Uh, we hope that open data will contribute to a thriving creative economy. Can other people do creative new things with it and have an economic impact? Uh, and we want to have an impact on the uh, network that we operate in. Can we, for example, through copyright reform, make sure that uh, the participating institutions uh, are more competitive, more innovative, etc.? So we call that loosely infrastructure innovation. Um, the way we've organized that is around th our thinking around that because it's already quite a, a complicated thing. Uh, it still is a complicated thing, but I like to, in a picture, it always looks a, lo a lot simpler. Um, so I know Liam told me I should never use this example any before anymore, uh, but I'm going to do it anyway because I don't have another one, which is, which is the Airbnb example. Uh, 
plenty of companies say, uh, we'd like to be the Airbnb of, and I'm not allowed to say that anymore from Lee. But it's, it's a good example be for us because we'd like to be an Airbnb-like platform for cultural heritage, where we invite people who have digital cultural heritage to share, to make it widely available so that other people for personal use or for professional use can make use of that again, just like an apartment on Airbnb. That only works, of course, if people who have apartments for rent and people who want to rent an apartment, that there is value flowing throughout that system. How does that work? Uh, we're figuring that out. But the primary aim of that and the motor uh, of this whole system is that we think uh, we need to do something about this. So this is all the cultural heritage that we have available in Europe, and that's huge amounts. Uh, We've estimated, and there are some reports on that, the Enumerate report is an important one, only 10% of that is digitized currently, which is a very relatively small amount if you uh, think about it. In absolute terms, that's already actually quite big, about 300 million objects. So that's everything from a painting that has been digitized to books, pages of books, manuscripts, etc. So rather than focus on all the stuff that's not been digitized, our plan focuses on, okay, what can we do with that 10% that's actually meaningful and useful? I think this is in particular where the Wikipedia community uh, can play a very important role in the partnership. Um, so with Europeana, we're trying to increase not only the amount of stuff that is being digitized, but the re reusability of it. So what you see over here is from all the material that we have in our database, that's 45 million approximately currently, this is the part that we consider reusable, legally reusable. Uh, so uh, taking the Creative Commons, uh, CC BY, CC BY is a public domain and CC0. Now that's the thing that we're focusing on most in our strategic plan. How can we increase that? So that it moves from here, we want to increase the total database, but more importantly, we feel that all of that is in vain if we don't increase the big chunk over here of the pie that is actually reusable. And when we talk actually reusable, it's not only legally reusable, but it is in uh, technical standards and formats that uh, allow you as a creative for your personal use to do something with it that's meaningful. So, now let's use this example, less of this stuff. We, we have some data in European which looks like this. Crap metadata, no preview, uh, leading to a page that you don't have access to. That sucks, to be American about it. Um, we'd like to have much more of this stuff. Rijksmuseum always being used as an example. Great metadata, nice thumbnail, leading you to the original that you can actually zoom into. Lots of creative possibilities there. Okay. Um, Do we have sound on this? Let me see if we can. Because this is a nice little video that I want to show you. It's short and sweet. Big theaters, three big libraries, uh, the opera, and so on. The guy in the, in the last uh, uh, village, he pays the taxes like me, and he has no access to the important cultural resources. I had discussion with a uh, museum director back in Romania. said, why should I expose in Europeana uh, my collection? And I said, imagine that uh, Louvre is, is given to you a window in Louvre. Would you put something there from your collection? Of course, in Louvre. Europeana is like this. It's, it's a, a big window of the uh, of the European culture. For that, I'm a very, very big fan. Okay. Uh, I'm showing you this, uh, A, because I'm a big fan of Dan. Uh, Dan, Dan runs the uh, Romanian part of uh, the Europeana network. He's a great guy and he, he expresses himself really well. Uh, whether we're the Louvre, I'm not sure about it, but I think what he's saying there is it's crucial for Europe that not only people who are next to the Louvre have access to the Louvre, but that people all over Europe have access to it wherever they want. And I think that again is where Wikipedia can play a crucial role. Wikipedia is the fifth biggest website in the world. That's where people come, not necessarily to the Louvre, nor to Europeana, but to Wikipedia. 
So what we're trying to do is, uh, if you look at this, this is how we uh, address our network, those three and a half thousand people currently contributing to Europeana. How can we seduce them, if you want, to give more and better stuff rather than uh, not? Well, there are various things that we do. Um, we uh, create cloud services, that's the latest fad that we're in. Uh, can we make it easier for you to host your stuff in a central place where you can communicate with others, etc.? Uh, would that be interesting to you? So we do plenty of things like that. I'm going to skip this. Um, what I wanted to really spend some attention on is, uh, is the following. So this is what we call our new reuse framework. We call it Publishing with Europeana, a guide. Uh, Still on the concept, we will publish it uh, shortly in the next couple of months. But we started to realize that it's actually quite complicated and complex for a, an institution uh, to understand the rules of the web, if you want. You know, what is happening out there? Uh, and can we make that a bit more manageable? Can we make that more manageable in chunks? For some people, uh, we always use the, the Rijksmuseum example, and I'm sure you've heard it before. They'll say, well, well, I'm not the Rijksmuseum. You know, uh, look, I'm a small archive or museum in uh, the south of Bulgaria. I don't have the funds. Uh, actually, I don't have the legal rights to do what they're doing. Really complicated for us. So the hurdle is way too big for me to even start thinking participating in this. So what we want to say is, look, that's all right. I mean, there are various ways that you can make your data available on the web uh, using Europeana, using our partners, using Wikipedia. So we're trying to uh, diversify the offering a bit, if you want to talk in, in um, more business-like terms. So we say, look, the simplest way of participating with Europeana, if, if you look at Europeana as a search engine, so this is a mock-up of uh, our new website. So what we can offer to you uh, is in, and that's, that's really simple. If you want to use Europeana as, just as a website, people coming through Europeana to your website, that's really simple. All you need to do is deliver us data, metadata, very basic stuff, only 10 mandatory fields. You need to conform to any of the licensing in our framework. Could be open, could not, could be closed. It's fine. We need a link to your website and we need an object, uh, a thumbnail if you want, of preferably 400 pixels wide, something along those lines. It's small, it's tiny, almost anyone should be able to do that. And if you do that, then uh, what we can do is we'll put you on the website and you'll get some traffic to your website. Simple. Try it, it's basically the message. And then of course, we try to bring them along in our thinking if you want and if you can, there are more possibilities. We're actually developing uh, all kinds of cool and interesting stuff that would make your material more valuable. We call that Europeana as a publication channel. It's currently under development. It uh, will look something like this, so it's more thematically based. We'll have something on art, we'll have something on music, uh, we'll have something on fashion, on natural history. You can imagine the types of themes that you can come up with and it will be richer it will be more contextualized. Uh, there will be a community of people working with you and you can work with that community to do a lot more on the web. Um, it will be more refined. Obviously the standards will be a little bit higher, but not dramatically higher. What we ask here is about 800 pixels wide. 800 pixels wide and still um, under any licensing format that, that our framework allows. So it's still fairly low threshold. If you do that, then we can do a lot more. We'll put you on the, on the portal, we'll put you in our channels, and uh, on microsites elsewhere that uh, can make use of your material. Obviously, you should be able to receive a lot more for that. So you'll get some visits to your website, but also visits on Europeana. You'll get more intense cooperation with the community. And now it becomes interesting for me. Now it becomes interesting also from a Wikipedia perspective. Because that all, of course, is still pretty much uh, old school thinking. It's uh, how many people can come to my place instead of how can I bring my stuff to the places where people are, which is to me what Wikipedia really embodies. 
Here we have two levels. We have Europeana as a non-commercial distribution platform. We thought that was important because there's still an element of, hmm, if I give all my stuff away like that on the web, it disappears, and not only that, other people make money, and where does it leave me? Okay, if uh, you're not prepared to completely open up, but if you think I have material that's still relevant, why don't you use Europeana as a non-commercial distribution platform? We'll make you available in educational sites, such as Historiana, um, and other places that are really clearly non-commercial. Research, for example. <coughs> The stakes are slightly higher, but still not unsurmountable. So here you need to put uh, a reusable license on it. That's clear, right? It's uh, any CC license uh, will fit that bill. Uh, we ask you to give a little bit richer metadata. We need a direct link to your objects. Uh, a link to your website won't surface anymore. And we need your material to be of higher quality, preferably, not necessarily. 1200 pixels, about one megapixel, uh, if you want, that would be sort of the standard. And finally, the gold standard of things, Europeana as a free reuse platform. Now, this is obviously where we'd like to be most, uh, because we think if we have that, then we can do so much more than would ever be possible. This is where we promote the hell out of you. We'll promote you on our open collections, blogs, uh, this is where you come in. We are then in a position to put the material on Wikipedia, on Wikimedia. We have Glam Wiki tool sets. Liam will talk about that later. Here's where you can really expect traffic to come, and not only traffic, enrichment of your data, etc. Um, obviously, this is slightly more complicated. Here, you only have four licenses that are allowed: uh, CC0, public domain, CC BY, and CC BY SA. Again, we need some richer metadata, a direct link to the object, and reasonably high quality. So this is sort of the framework that we're trying to introduce in our network of institutions. And uh, we're going to do quite a big campaign about it uh, leading up to summer in order to uh, first educate uh, our network. And these are all the possibilities. You can still participate on a very low threshold, but there are some really clear advantages of opening up. So that's the real main message for it. Which leads us to, uh, I think, Liam's presentation. Um, I started this presentation by saying our values are reasonably close from Europeana and Wiki. We've always liked each other because we've always worked in the open data uh, scene, if you want. Nevertheless, uh, where Wikipedia only allows material that is CC by SA or higher, uh, they're more open, Europeana also feels that we have a uh, commitment to our partners who can't always do that. So there are some slight tensions there. I don't think they're unsurmountable, and I think there are actually a whole lot of things that we can do together. Liam, do you want to pick up from here? So yeah, as, as Harry has said, the... the ideological consistencies between what Europeano is trying to do and what Wikimedia is trying to do is extremely close relative to any other kind of glam or meta-glam like Europeana than possibly anywhere else in the world of glam wiki. Uh, obviously, as Harry said, there are elements of what Europeana does that are not applicable to what Wikimedia does. And there are elements of what Wikimedia does that are not applicable to what Europeana does. But more than any other kind of external organization from the Wikimedia perspective, Europeana gets what we do. One, because Europeana does not own any of the content that is visible within it. It's all patent content. It's all material that has arrived from other places. And so it's all being hosted on behalf of a wider community. And two, because of the focus uh, and the interest in reuse that derives from that. Europeana can only take content that someone else has provided, made available. And we can only, we Europeana, can only reuse or encourage reuse when that original organization says so. So there is a great um, ideological, for want of a better word, push from both communities towards greater openness. <coughs> Europeana being the only the organization that helped build CC0, the public domain dedication that helped build the public domain charter or that, that 
owns the public domain charter as a form of saying, yes, it's public domain, but yes, we would also really like if you would attribute, but that's okay, it's not a legal requirement, but it's good practice. So that kind of educating the cultural sector, but also educating the wider reuse internet community about good practices in <coughs> reuse and good practices in cultural contemporary digital remix is really up the alley of, of Glam Wiki, that quote from this morning of the same people, the same place, the same medium for the same purpose. Who said that? That's a really good idea. Um, that's why I think Europeana and related organisations like DPLA in America, Trove in Australia, uh, Digital New Zealand in New Zealand, have a lot of potential for Wikimedia relationships, more so possibly than even individual glams. The tricks, the problem in uh, developing really interesting partnerships from GlamWiki is the same problem that Europeana has. We don't own the content. We need the institutions to provide good quality metadata, good quality uh, material that is reusable by other people. Uh, and then as an organisation, if you are taking material from a GLAM, making it available and then someone uses it, how to demonstrate to your political partners, your funding organisations, your, your wider community, that you played a part of relevance in that transaction. Uh, so <coughs> Europeana very much wants to be involved in facilitating greater glam wiki interactions and not simply interceding between that relationship. There is no point in Europeana interceding between Wikimedia UK and the British Library. You can talk to each other perfectly well already. Uh, and that would be politically not very useful to do that. But when there is an institution, say the Southern Regional Library of Bulgaria that was mentioned, Europeana can really have a great impact in trying to connect that smaller or less digital or less uh, connected institution with the wider world of Wikimedia and any other kind of social media, or blogs or whatever uh, through this, this hub, through this network. If I can return to one of Libya's earlier slides, uh, a long way back, uh, the circle diagram somewhere. Yeah, there we go. that's the one. That is the visualization of where Europeana wants to go. And you can see that, that Wiki, Wikimedia is one angle out. It's the end user services. is one part of the big puzzle of providing a platform rather than merely providing a search box. Uh, there's no point in Europeana trying to compete with Google's art project, or sorry, keep compete with Google Books for Europe. Uh, but being a platform for interesting kinds of connections between Glam's wikis and professionals is where that, that genuinely holds value. Um, Wikipedia, Wikimedia has the visibility and the end users. Europeana has the legitimacy, the connections with the cultural institutions across the, across the continent. How to bridge that is hopefully where I come in and hopefully where Jesse comes in. That's, my That's your cue. We spent the last couple of uh, months, including several people in this room, building uh, this report, a task force for, oh, how do I make that connect up again? Um, I think it's on your secondary screen. Building a, a task force report on what could, what could or should Europeana do to work better with Wikimedia? Uh, what are the pitfalls? What are the advantages? Where are the connections that are most likely? Recognizing, as, as Harry mentioned, that we're not the same, but similar. Thanks. So. Liam asked me two or twenty minutes ago. How long is it? <laughs> to to read to you. Credit for the for the 
report that you mainly wrote. Okay, <laughs> so I'll, I'll tell a little bit more. Um, it's actually kind of funny that I'd be standing here because at the time I was employed by uh, Sound and Vision, the, the Dutch uh, audiovisual archives, uh, which is a, a, a partner of Europeana. So uh, it's a part of the network of Europeana. It's one of the requirements for Europeana is to get strategic advice from its broader network. Um, and currently, uh, still for a few more days, I'm employed by Wikimedia in the Netherlands. I was doing a project for them. And, and the interesting thing about this task force also was that it was a, a really good mix of people from the, the European network, uh, people from Wikimedia chapters, but also um, volunteers from, uh, from the broader Wikimedia network. Um, so it, it really was a combined effort. And uh, so I kind of feel a little bit like a newsreader just um, taking you through the recommendations. And um, um, so there are strategic recommendations, and it's really good to see that with these uh, with this uh, uh, flyer that was just handed out um, with the, the, the strategic decisions that European is making, that um, these recommendations have definitely been taken into account and we're very curious and excited to see how they are going to be played out uh, practically um, and, and maybe there will be some time to get some more input from you like on these different strategic recommendations, how they could be implemented because that's of course uh, a very relevant question, but went a bit further than uh, than we would go in our uh, task force recommendations. So I can scroll through this, right? Yes. Mm, there we go. Beautiful. So there were 12 people in the official task force, but there were a number of people who uh, who very enthusiastically chimed in with uh, with their expertise, which we were really excited about. So the first recommendation is um, that for every Europeana project, considering the possible benefits of a Wikimedia component should be default behavior. What we started by doing as a task force was the um, uh, sort of taking stock of all the things that have been happening between uh, Europeana and Wikimedia, Europeana broader network and uh, Wikimedia, and, and just trying to see what have been these, the benefits of, uh, of this. And uh, that's been uh, um, uh, uh, published on the, the meta page. I can put a link in the... Uh, uh, etherpad in a sec um, and, and and based on that we we said basically this is so it's it seems so relevant and like Liam was saying there are so many uh, there's so much overlap in what we're trying to achieve um, it's kind of critical that this becomes almost default behavior to just ask yourself the question we're setting up a new project okay potentially what could be a role that Wikimedia could play with its platforms um, it, that doesn't answer that question but it it's a good practice, we believe, to ask that question before, uh, before starting a project, um, which can, uh, it, ca it can, for example, be a, a copyright compatibility uh, report, just to, to consider the outcome of this project. What is it going to deliver? And is there one way or another in which we can focus it so that it is also applicable, usable on the Wikimedia chapters? Um, it can include the communications plan, the outreach plan, uh, what what media are we going to use? What uh, um, what platforms are we going to use, etc. Second recommendation is to help facilitate local connections between GLAMs and Wikimedians. There was some debate because, of course, there are a ton of local connections between GLAMs and Wikimedians. Uh, but I think it's uh, important for us to realize that this is um, for some privileged countries perhaps that have a little bit more of a track record with working with GLAMs. These connections already exist, but uh, make no mistake, there's definitely still countries there that don't have that track record, that don't have a dedicated GLAM person, uh, that don't have the relationships. Europeana definitely is the go-to partner within Europe to, uh, to, to build those relationships and to make these initial introductions. Um, so hopefully not for all eternity, but for now definitely still a very important role for Europeana to play. Um, third recommendation was to generate and distribute knowledge about Wikimedia culture among uh, European staff. I think as you all know, uh, if you don't know yet, you'll know after this weekend, <laughs> uh, Wikimedia culture is kind of a, an odd beast. Um, and um, it's a very different world from, uh, from the glam institutions, which is also an odd beast, I have to say. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> She's nodding. You shouldn't, you shouldn't use understatement. Understatement. Oh, I, okay. I can crank it up. Okay, nice. Um, so, um, yeah, just to, to gather knowledge about what, what this community is about, what they what they need to to thrive, to succeed, to enable them to do their work well, and what they are good at. Um, and um, so. Um, 
So the, the, the yeah, so your piano staff, if they are to consider a um, Wikimedia component as default behavior, uh, they're gonna need to have some knowledge about what uh, Wikimedia is about, what the different projects do, what the, what you can expect from the community, um, what the, the sort of rules and regulations and guidelines are on uh, the different platforms, etc. And vice versa, of course. Um, generate and distribute knowledge about Europeana um, among Wikimedia. Uh, for instance, I just had a chat with someone, he's not here, uh, and he had a question, posed a question to uh, Sound and Vision, the audiovisual archive of the Netherlands, and um, and it had been a few weeks. Now, I know, because I've worked there, that a few weeks is nothing. <laughs> that is, uh, but for, for a Wikimedian, the world moves fast and they, they would like to have it tomorrow. Um, in a bigger glam institution, there is a ton of people that have to look at it, have a say in it. Uh, it's just good to have a party like European who knows, or hopefully knows both worlds a little bit better, especially the glam world, of course, and can, uh, can distribute the knowledge that they have. Uh, number five, Europeana should support efforts in bringing pro forma policy to partners regarding open licensing of both content and data. I think this has been covered, just pushing the agenda of openness uh, more, uh, more and more. And um, not, not that that is going to be Europeana's sole business, of course, but it should definitely be important. Um, Europeana to gather and distribute best practice about measuring impacts on the Wikimedia platforms. I think this is still, uh, yeah, it's still something that we're learning. Uh, Europeana seems to be very well positioned to s sort of get the larger scale statistics and, and how, how, what the impact of uh, projects is. Um, so I think they're really well pos positioned to, uh, to provide that knowledge to their partners in the network. Um, seven, make Wikidata a central element of the portal to platform strategy. Um, uh, as you know, Wikidata, it was announced very enthusiastically. It's a very, it's a thriving project. It's growing really rapidly. Um, and um, um, the, uh, this is really a time for GLAMS to start participating in that, but uh, it would be ideal to do that on a larger scale. If every GLAM institution is gonna find it out by themselves, um, it's gonna take a lot longer than if, uh, if Europeana would, you know, take this into account in their projects. Um, would get multiple uh, yeah, institutions from the network together to do projects that have some Wikidata uh, component. Europeana should continue to invest in technology that improves the interoperability, that's a nice word, between GLAMS and Wikimedia platforms. Um, like they've developed the GLAM Wiki toolset, there's more to be said about it, but that was just a very practical way of uh, making it possible for institutions to donate large quantities of content to Wikimedia Commons. Um, and again, Europeana uh, seems to be well positioned to, uh, to do that, although there are some challenges there that I think will be discussed maybe in the workshop a little bit, but, um, but the tool works. So if you haven't checked it out and you wanna upload content, come to the, it's on Sunday, the, the Glam Wiki toolset training, it's gonna be great. Number nine, Europeana should pursue joint applications for external funding opportunities. Um, Europeana, the name says it all, it has the Euro European perspective that most GLAMs have a much more uh, local perspective and also uh, Wikimedia chapters by their very nature are more local. Um, so it could be an ideal opportunity to, to look for partnerships that, that cover our cross borders, um, that um, maybe uh, applications uh, towards the European Union uh, and stuff like that. And finally, Europeana should investigate becoming the first Wikimedia movement partner. Um, this was suggested by uh, Liam. There is at present no, uh, no actual movement partner. It's just been suggested that it's an option. Um, and that's also why the, it's to investigate becoming a, a first movement partner. There's, there is huge overlap between what we're trying to do. Um, so we would just be interested in, for Europeana to find out more about what that could mean, how that could benefit both parties. Um, so on a, yeah, on a longer term, that's something that could be considered. And those are the 10 recommendations. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh. I'll take that back off. Yep, <laughs> sure. I should add that Jesse is, as the chair of this committee, did what is quite rare in committees and produced a 
very readable report in the time frame that the original decision was said to happen. When does that ever happen in committee work? Um, so that's, that's, that's Jesse's um, organizational power. Um, yes? There's a link to the report. The report is actually on the program, but I've also put a link to the report and the meta page that Jesse mentioned in the um, etherpad. So the, the most practical piece of specific um, work that was done over the last few years, uh, mentioned here uh, on the side, is the Glamicky toolset. And there will be a, a, a workshop about the Glamicky toolset on Sunday. That corresponds to uh, recommendation nine or so, um, no, eight, about uh, technological investment. Now, We've had difficulty, as many of you will know, in terms of making this quite complicated piece of software A, work, and B, uh, get integrated and funded and so forth. So subsequent to the publishing of this, of this report, uh, Europeana has agreed to no longer pursue active software development. However, uh, that does not mean we are abandoning the software that we have built. Furthermore, it does work. And so, Tying with the, um, now how do I go back to your report, uh, Vip, and your presentation? The, t the procedure that Harry talked about with levels of investment in Europeana for the different gram GLAMs, when you get to the top level investment, uh, if you could find that slide, the, the highest uh, grade the suggestion is, well, what can you do with that? Europeana has built a system to push that, to push mass amounts of multimedia to Wikimedia. And, to, and also Europeana is asking these GLAMs to provide their metadata and provide their material with as open as possible license and a consistent metadata standard, uh, which we call EDM, the Europeana Data Model. So why don't we investigate providing GlamWiki toolset upload on the GLAM's behalf for that material as a kind of value add package. You've provided this material at high resolution in open license with good metadata in a structured way. We've also built a piece of software that will push that to Wikimedia Commons and we know how to use it. Uh, that's not how we've traditionally used uh, multimedia or material that has come to Europeana and it's not how the GLAMWiki toolset has been traditionally used. We have built it primarily for the GLAMs to use for themselves, and they do. And Europeana has traditionally taken an approach of, we make it available, but we are not personally going to place it elsewhere. But maybe that's a method for us to provide a direct value add proposition for those institutions that have gone to the effort of providing high quality metadata and high quality multimedia to Europeana, that we can silently make it available once every six months or every year to Wikimedia Commons, and then put that institution in touch with their local uh, Wikimedians and get to the fun part of having editathons and activities and not spend a lot of time talking about metadata mapping. Uh, if you're going to go to the effort of putting it in Europeana, then we can help solve that question rather than making you do it again to talk to Wikimedia and talk about categories and, and templates and so forth. So that's one kind of practical outcome of the recommendations that Jesse talked about and the portal to platform strategy and the sort of scaled up you know, levels of benefit uh, that Europeana is going through, uh, going through that we, we hope to provide. Do that's ask yeah, there's no, like, we're going to do this tomorrow, um, but <laughs> yeah, it's the, the day after tomorrow. <laughs> uh, but the, the idea, if once we, can, once we can filter our material by license, metadata quality, multimedia quality, uh, language and so forth, then you can, we can potentially make a once every six month batch Here's the new stuff. Yeah, but when would you be ready to start with the first user 
not just with one institution, let's say 200,000 pictures, they're already, they have just a few. Yeah, just yeah. a few, they have their metadata. I think they're providing it now to the Europeana, I'm not sure whether they're already there. Mm. And they have for high distribution TIFF files, yeah. global uh, licensing is okay. Yeah. So when would you be ready to start a... The, the, the difference is, and, and Harry, correct, or Harry, add in what if you'd like. The difference is in the organizational approach that Europeana has previously had. It's not a technological problem for that material, which is already good, high resolution, license, and so forth. But Europeana has never previously itself pushed that material. Yes, it's open licensed, but we take an approach of we will still ask you, the GLAM, do you want us to do it? Do you want us to put this here and talk to that organization on your behalf? Yeah. The idea of filtering good quality content and pushing it every six months means we're not talking about everything from institution A and everything from institution B, but maybe one image from you and 20 from you and 30 from you. So that's a different organizational approach. The thing to add is, uh, I think you said it quite well, it's it's the differences in, uh, in speed of operating. Uh, you want it done tomorrow, and the institutions have worked 500 years to come to the point where they currently are, and we're sort of in the middle. So the first hurdle to take here is, the, is one more technical hurdle. Are we able to filter out this, the, the multimedia on quality? We're working hard on that. That should be available end of May. Then it's a, uh, okay, that comes with my campaign uh, thing. Uh, do you all understand institutions that if you've slapped public domain on your data, that it actually is public domain and we're going to do everything that public domains allows it to do? That's, I think, the interesting thing. Not all institutions understand that. Sounds weird, right? But it, it, it is the case. We, we very often come to this, okay, uh, so we're going to do X, Y, and Z with it. Oh, but that's not what I thought this thing was. You know, public domain is a fairly clear one, but uh, I thought CC by SA meant something completely different. We want to avoid a big backlash. So there's some groundwork to be done. I think that's the, the important point. But we'll do it, you know, whenever we feel that we're, uh, we're in a good place for it. So the, so the question is about defining usefulness of material. Uh, not so much defining, but how do you trigger it? How do you inspire it in the community? The, I would say that it's, it's a, a two-directional problem or question. Uh, Europeana's partners are GLAM institutions. That's who we work for on behalf of. And Wikimedians and Wikimedia projects are a different kind of partner. They're not institutional relationships, but a, a customer of the Europeana um, product. So in some cases, a GLAM will want to do things and then ask, what can I do? And myself could potentially contact um, the, the chapter of that country and say, hey, do you want to work with this organization? They have some good stuff. And vice versa. Sometimes a glam, uh, a Wikimedia community will say, we're doing projects about birds or about our language. Uh, and there's not much available in our language online. Can you find some stuff? So it's relatively rare that material has been placed, made available in large amounts, and there is the one person who finds it automatically and says, perfect, this is exactly what I wanted and I don't need to contact anyone else, I'll just do it. Um, the questions will come from both sides. The task is to try and forward those questions to the right, the answer to the right people. 
if that makes, uh, but jo I think you have an an uh, another answer. Um, first thing is that um, a lot of Wikipedia, most Wikipedians who are looking for images in Commons will be searching in using search terms in Commons. So if your metadata is, is meaningful and if you're, particularly if your file names have got relevant words that actually pull things up, then you will find that, that stuff is used more. Um, getting some categories right is also helpful. Um, but also, if you can um, get the categorization to a level where people can then um, contact the relevant wiki projects and the relevant parts of the community, that's really helpful. So there was a lovely upload of, of maps from Holland a while back, which initially was just several thousand maps from the Dutch East Indies company, I think it was. Once that was categorized down to individual countries, suddenly um, communities like, wiki, like um, Indonesia were very excited about it. Now, since half of it was from Indonesia anyway, you could have actually gone to there straight off and said half of this is Indonesian. But it actually helps to get to the point where you say, oh, we've now got um, this, this specific category that's interesting to you. And the same sort of thing applies with, with topical subjects. Um, and it's also possible to get a few Wikimedians around or get some interns around and just add images to articles that don't have images yet. Nobody's going to be upset when you do that, as long as you've got the right images. Hi. Well, I'm very glad to hear about the digital, because that's what I did when I was a, a, a Wikipedia residence here at the National Library. So I'm very glad that it's actually being used. And one of the ways that we, um, that we did it is by having all the descriptions in English, because it, it's a Dutch database, but <coughs> everything was also in English. So I guess also having metadata in the proper, you know, in the language that many people speak can be very, very uh, fruitful to, uh, to have in this room. One of the beautiful things about Commons is that while you, have, you can only have one file name for a file, and that, that can be in any language, um, you can have multiple categories, but the categories are supposed to be in English, but you can have descriptions in several different languages. Um, and of course that helps with search and so on as well. We do hope, and especially with the, the multilingual aspect, as was mentioned in, the, in those recommendations, and as will probably be mentioned, will definitely be mentioned several times this weekend, uh, the power of Wikidata as potentially a, a input and output for Europeana content is quite interesting for us. Um, the value of being able to provide multilingual uh, um, metadata record titles, record names, not just year, but the word year or date in all the 28 languages that Europeana tries to serve for all of our content, um, both as a way of providing more structured searching, okay, click on this artist, where are the paintings by them, in which institutions, in which countries, and so forth. Do they have a cloud in them? Is there a dog in that painting? Show me other paintings with dogs. Uh, that's probably only possible with, uh, with, the, with Wikidata. Uh, and so we're looking at ways of hooking into that, which could be very, um, very powerful. I'd also like to re-emphasize how the Europeana's relationship with Wikimedia has to be more than just um, pretty pictures. Uh, because Europeana, most of the content, most people think of it as a search repository of pictures of greater or lesser quality. But if we are talking about Europeana being no longer or not primarily a portal, a search portal, but a platform for interacting and remixing European digital cultural heritage, then we're talking about people talking to people and inter-organizational inter communication. So the other week, and this we'll, we'll talk about tomorrow, the other month, we hosted in, in the Wikimedia France office the first ever coordination meeting of the European GlamWiki representatives, of which there are three in the room uh, who are in that meeting. The idea being that if Europeana is representing the GLAMs of Europe, then we should be trying to host the conversations so that the Wikimedians of Europe can coordinate more effectively, not reinvent the wheel, do things that are pan-European. Uh, 
even if that is not necessarily based on content or using the website or API of Europeana. It's nice if they do, good for us, uh, but if Europeana can facilitate the greater reuse of digital European cultural heritage content, so much the better. And if, if by having more Wikimedians knocking on the doors of those glams saying, we want to use your stuff, it has to be CC by SA, or it has to be P CC zero, that helps Europeana directly. Uh, so, uh, J John. You uh, know, just, just, just on that question of copyright, uh, you were mentioning that, that, that some organizations that you're interacting with wish to use the NC designation. Do you have put together a spiel of why that NC designation might not be the best? Or, you know, like, uh, it, you know, people always say, well, I, I put NC on it so that nobody else can make money off of this content. But if you read it, if you release stuff openly, um, if there's a free version, it really, you know, if, if you release without the NC, there really isn't much of an ability for others to make a profit off it anyway. Do you have a spiel that that, that, that you give? You know, because this is something that you know we all deal with. We, you know, we, we approach institutions, and they always say, "Well, what if I want to use NC?" And, and, and how do you how do you try to convince them otherwise? Yeah, we have uh, spent the last seven years devising a spiel. Uh, not always as successful, but sometimes we do. I think it's it's a combination of all kinds of things. Showing, like you know, we published uh, a couple of months back a, uh, a case study on the Rijksmuseum. So uh, to give a better understanding of okay, even the Rijksmuseum, which actually is quite a wealthy institution, they took that decision based on business grounds. They said there's two hundred thousand euros here that I can make on licensing stuff. And there is something else there if I open it up, and I chose for that. And, I'd act and they opened it up, and uh, what it did for them, it increased their reputation tremendously. I mean, it's free publicity. You know, I mean, you know the arguments. It's getting that into the heads of the institutions. But it's what we do every day. It's, it's, it's a constant spiel of trying to convince that open is better. I mean, we fundamentally believe in that. There's now not even a question about it. I think it's... Uh, yeah, it, it, it's a fairly, but it doesn't mean that everyone uh, understands it immediately uh, at all. I mean, there's still, there are big pockets of resistance in that thinking, um, you know, uh, it'll take a while. Yeah. So did those arguments really come down in some way, so you don't have to work one glam at a time with them over and over? I think, can you yeah. just take the arguments are all, yeah, oh, this is it, this is it. These are the cases, or these are the outcomes. Over here, look here, uh, rather than just. Because, you know, I, I, I've had the World Health Organization ask me. They said, you know, provide us with a document explaining yeah. that, right. you know, this is the right thing for the World Health Organization to go, to go with. You know, right. right now they're using basically their own version of a non commercial license. Yeah. And they're like, you know, and they told me, they said, hey, provide us a document explaining why we should go to uh, CC. Yeah. BY SA or CCBY license. Yeah. That would be really good. Yeah, okay. I, I, well, I, I, I don't need for that too. Yeah. We, also, this is the kind of Jamie session that is on pitching. Yeah. You know, but we should produce standard documents yeah. that we well, share with, with, with good examples of, of, of other institutions that have had success that haven't, yeah. it, the disasters haven't appeared, they've been doing it for this, this amount of time, and these are the benefits their organization has seen yeah. from using these open licenses. Because, and these specific examples, I think, would go a long way with other institutions. Yeah. Sure. People well, want it's... the personal stories of other institutions. Yeah. Well, we've got what a... happens is that somebody who's a new Wikipedian or a new resident right. has to face the same question and ask the same question sure. on the mailing list over and over. Well, there are a couple. I mean, I see what you're saying, and I think it's, it's, it would be an interesting thing to group those things. Uh, we've got a couple of documents I can name off the top of my head, which is the, the Rijksmuseum case study. We've written a paper a while back called uh, The Yellow Milkmaid, which sort of also tries to hash it out. There's a great case study of uh, the Institute of Southern Vision and Open Images. Uh, so there are three of those already. And we need to do more, but maybe grouping them together so you can easily say, let's let's take these would be a good idea. The yeah. Why not NC? <coughs> the question is the most huh. yeah, repetitious conversation in in Glamwicky. Huh. Yeah. That's actually why I got into or uh, invented Glamwicky in the first place. The first, my job at the time was trying to license 
multimedia material from the State Library of New South Wales. And I got so frustrated with them not allowing me to use stuff that I ran the first Glam Wiki conference to try to stop doing this. And now look at it. It's, and it is interesting because NC presupposes you actually have right to uh, to the stuff, and you can decide to make it open or not. That that's probably the easiest thing to overcome, uh, rather than to say, well, uh, it's an orphan work or it's something else. Yeah, then you have a problem. But this is something we. It, it's a matter of convincing that there is a business and a moral rationale behind it. Yeah. Yeah. There's, a, there's a booklet we've produced in the UK which is a stack of which is sitting on with the European stuff on the table near the entrance yeah. and it's got one or two case studies in there so feel free to grab yourselves one if, particularly if you're, you don't mind in examples that are mostly well, yeah. skewed towards the UK. Actually, maybe how high you want to say so? In the open well, glam I was, community. I was, just, I was wondering because you know there's many there's so many leaflets, there's so many, you know, brochures, there's so many, you know, loose documents. Wouldn't it be time to, you know, if you want to become a Christian, you read the Bible, maybe we should, like, <laughs> make a evangelical <laughs> document of free knowledge and hand it out? We can put it on a wiki. Yeah, yeah, but there is a group, uh, the Open Glam, the Open Glam group. I'm, I'm not sure how many of you are, you are aware. They, they started producing a list, right? Sort of an index of uh, everything related to these arguments. Uh, but it would be good to make that a bit more public. Yeah, I think. You know, leaflets are something that people take home, or they can look it up. But you know, something yeah. if you if you if you give a book to somebody, you know, it's something that you keep. It's 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 a little bit less, you know, a book. temporary. You can put it in your closet and you see, ah yes, there it is. <laughs> it should be in our hotel tonight. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We should go around like the Gideons putting yeah, exactly. the one yeah. non-commercial book in every hotel room around the world. God yeah. doesn't want you to put NC. This like compilation of a complete how-to guide is one of the outcomes of my UNESCO project. Which I'm doing a uh, talk on tomorrow to make a project. Uh, so yes, yeah, there'll be like a, a workshop on how to make that tomorrow. And I think it's also one of the things that Jamie wants to do with learning patterns oh, yeah. is to put this sort of things uh, in the evaluation uh, uh, program. Well, I'm sorry, I'm just fascinating as it is. We yeah, have to oh, wrap it up at this point in time. We've got to the end of our our session time. Thank you everyone for contributing and please keep the discussion going. If you've got some documents that we mentioned, please add them to the email. If you've got links to digital copies of some of those leaflets, um, if you've got even some questions that you want to put into the conversation, please add them. And we have um, some bits for our speakers. There are there are several other sessions relating to what European is doing in, Wikim in Wikimedia later this weekend. Um, there's a Wikidata, European Wikidata session tomorrow. Uh, there is also a summary tomorrow of what we did in Paris, the Glam Wiki Coordinators of Europe meeting. And on Sunday there's a Glam Wiki tool set workshop. Obviously, you know how to contact us.